All right, we're here with some award-winning filmmakers uh, just after the TIFF Awards. What's, uh, who are we with for the audience at home? Hi, my name is Vinay. Uh, my name is Aman. Uh, we, I'm the director, he's the cinematographer on a film, on a feature documentary called While We Watched. Uh, it's about uh, journalism uh, in today's times. Cool, so it's a feature documentary? Yes. Very cool, and uh, where, does, where does it take place? Uh, it takes place in New Delhi, India. Okay. Uh, I started this film four years ago because I was watching TV news and it, it was driving me insane. Really? Uh, so, and I, it made me feel terribly lonely and hopeless. So I decided to make a film that could possibly fix the news and make everybody hopeful uh, all over again, uh, which is a, a tall uh, ambition. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, fix the news, I'm going to do it. Uh, but that's right, like, I mean, it's a foolish ambition, but I guess we're all fools. you got to aim high, otherwise, uh, I don't know, there's some expression, like, aim for the stars, at least you'll, you might not reach them, but at least you'll never come up with a handful of mud, something like that. So I completely agree with that. Uh, there is another version of that that, uh, that I say, that you have to run really hard, uh, and at the end you'll win some race, so yeah. Exactly, or Wayne Gretzky says you, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. We could go all day with little sayings like that, but uh, but clearly you've done well. You won the, you won the best documentary. That's amazing. Yeah, we won the Amplify Award. It's it's very very exciting for us. Uh, when I wasn't even sure when I was making the film if there would be a film. Yeah. <laughs> so out of all of that intense loneliness and anxiety to get an award, I'm really happy. Uh, and uh, yeah. I feel intense anxiety and loneliness all the time myself. I, I should start making a documentary. I didn't realize that was the answer. But maybe interviewing people is the answer. So is this your first time in Toronto and, and at TIFF? Um, yes, this is my first. This is, our, this is my first time when it's uh, fifth time. Oh, fifth time. <laughs> so you're an old hand at this. But that's nice that you brought your cinematographer. And I mean, uh, I've brought him because he's a... Uh, I keep telling everybody he's he's worked in uh, literally every department in the film. Uh, okay. Uh, just the cinematographer. Yeah, he's and the he's, caterer. Yeah, so <laughs> he's not just the caterer. He's a, he's also he's he's ten years younger than me and far more talented than I am. Mm. So my ambition is to make sure that I be nice to him because in the future he's going to be the biggest bigger artist. Yeah, yeah. So at least he'll hire me then. All right, I'm done with you. I'm just talking to him now. <laughs> no, I'm just just kidding, sort of. Uh, well, it's exciting. And did did you achieve the goal of changing the news? Like, what what's the message of the film? Like, are you just ha like what was what was the upsetting you about the news? I mean, so there is currently uh, a news is a theater of revenge. Yeah. It's always somebody saying that we need to avenge something that some wrong that has been done. Yeah. And I feel like that essentially uh, does reduces us to people who are deeply vengeful, mm -hmm. full of vengeance. Yeah. Uh, that's not me. No. But I have the n I have absolutely no way to tell the news that this is not what how I need the news done in my country, uh, and even across the world. So. The challenge is how do you counter that sort of uh, uh, style with something better? And my ambition is that we need to have a larger dialogue around frameworks. What is the framework of knowledge? What is the framework of public information that we have? How do we make sure that our news is better? Uh, 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 we need more regulations. I have a couple of ideas how we can do this. But the idea is, you know, when you, when you decide to... When I said that I'm going to try and fix the news, I of course knew I can't do it myself. Yeah. And it's not like I'm saying something that is massively revelatory to people, yeah. right? But we're all trying to throw the stone at yeah. this very, very large beast ahead of us. Yeah. Uh, all we can do is what we can do. You can do your little part, and if nobody does anything, nothing gets done, but you got to start. And, and somehow we won an award today. Yeah. That means the message is resonating. Yeah, for sure. That means what we are going for is it has an audience out there. Yeah. Uh, this dialogue, many more people need to think about it, contribute it, write about it, talk about it. How do we make our news better? How do we make our public information system better? Is it the idea that like, the news is always looking for conflict and pitting people against each other? It's not talking about people who are doing good things or what we have in common? I, is don't, that have, I don't have a problem with people looking for conflict yeah. or pitting people against each other. My ambition is that when you, when you pit two people against each other, what is the framework of dialogue between them? Is it going to be two people yelling at each other, making claims? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, how do you understand facts? How do you understand bias? What's a good bias? What's a bad bias? For example, I have a bias towards nonviolence. Uh, when I go on the news, will you pit me against somebody who has a bias for violence yeah. and say that both of them deserve equal time? Mm -hmm. uh, these are conversations that we need to have. 
the we need to be able to establish a framework we need to be able to establish a framework for the safe keeping of journalism because yep. currently whatever people uh, say it's is is their own fact uh, it's we are living in a post fact world which is eroding our social fabric as for example if you see with the capital hill riots mm -hmm. wherein people felt entitled enough to go in the capital hill building mm -hmm. and say that we are going to do whatever we feel like doing mm -hmm. uh, so it's coming for journalists across the world this tide of misinformation and what it does to people and we need to come up with better systems cool cool yeah even myself i've sort of used to trust the news years ago and i've just started realizing in the past few years like wait a minute there's a lot of bias like no matter what the station is and i i sort of feel like i've got to look at all the networks and then try to figure out what's going on on my own and try to find things they're leaving out so that's a framework right yeah. that's a framework you have you've mm -hmm. come up with a framework wherein you go like okay i need to take information from multiple sources yeah. and then apply some of my own jurisdiction on this yeah. and rigor which is a great framework to start with yeah. right uh, but there has to be uh, you know uh, we need a wider dialogue especially for the younger people in our country yeah. uh, and across the world you can't imagine the impact of news right now on 8 year olds on 15 year olds mm -hmm. because this is the only thing that they have seen shouting anchors is the only uh, is the only dialogue that they're watching via television yeah. so uh, we need to course correct and reflect urgently yeah cuz i used to like i've always been very liberal i've been a green party environmentalist guy i assumed okay cnn is the truth and i was afraid of fox news like sure. that's lies but then when i saw you know, I was like, they're saying a lot of things about Donald Trump. I'm like, well, a lot of that isn't true. And I started I looking into it. And then I started watching Fox. I'm like, oh, I don't, you know, I don't agree with everything, but I, at least I see where they're coming from. Yeah. And then I looked at CNN and again, I'm like, it's obviously extremely biased. And they even admit it. Like their goal is to get rid of Trump and they leave out information that's not true or the, like they leave out true information. And they'll just flat out lie. And I'm like, okay. So a lot of people don't have the critical ability to sort of sift through this stuff and figure out what's actually going on. I think what's important is that even though people may be on different sides of the, uh, of the political argument, right? You yeah. can be pro Trump, anti Trump, pro yeah. this government, pro anti that leader, yeah. uh, frameworks, like how do, how is it that a news organization can ensure that the news it's putting out is truly representative of the opinions out there of the diverse opinions within its own newsrooms right right uh, yes there is a bias and very often you will encounter that bias yeah. uh, is there a way that you can uh, uh, educate your own audiences about biases and like i said good bias and bad bias yeah. so that's what i'm talking about framework it's not yeah. for as long as we keep talking about individuals the problems uh, you know the anchors the stations yeah. we'll be focusing on one right that's uh, the, that's the small story that's not meaningful yeah. yeah and sooner than later people will falter so yeah. that doesn't it's important, but for me, I am not aspiring for that dialogue. Yeah. I am constantly asking people, how do we make our news better? What are the ground rules? Are we, can we agree on any ground rule? If, we, if, if you're going to say there are no rules, then we will have to suffer the consequences yeah. of no rules. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, that's very profound, and uh, I'm glad it's catching on. And how did your cinematographer uh, specifically help? Like, you know, did you got lots of, you weren't just using archival footage of the news. You were out filming your own stuff? I mean, he's very, very good uh, uh, in terms of just capturing a certain mood and building a certain relationship with people over, docs are a very long process. Yeah. So it's, it requires a lot of interpersonal relationships to be able to get access. But besides that, his craft of, of capturing people and looking at, looking at the way looking at them the way cinema does yeah. is fantastic wow. whenever i see the th stuff that he shot i feel like this is cinema yeah. i feel like this is how i watch it in the movies and now i i can feel what the character is going through yeah. uh, on the screen when i see the stuff that he's watched so i was very excited to collaborate with him for that reason that's great and yeah, uh, yeah. cuz everybody can shoot with an iphone now but you know it doesn't make it an exciting movie to watch Precisely. doesn't film, film. So, Precisely. Yeah. so now we're getting your message out but it's also feeling like a blockbuster movie kind of thing Let's hope. Yeah, awesome. Well, thank you so much. And it was all shot in India, like in your town? Yeah. Wow, that's great. I can't wait to see it. And hopefully I can come, uh, come uh, you know, help you guys with films in India at some point. And uh, are you taking this around other festivals now? It's going to be, it's playing at Busan next month and then a couple of other festivals, which they haven't announced, so I can't say yet. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm planning to, st I had so much fun at TIFF, I want to start traveling around. So hopefully I'll get to talk to you at another festival at right. and you'll win more awards. Thanks right. so much, guys. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye-bye.